Lord, open our lips and we will declare your praise. This morning we read Psalm 68. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him, may you blow them away like smoke, as, mux, as wax melts before the fire, may the wicked perish before God. May the righteous be glad and rejoice before God, may they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing in praise of his name, extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him, his name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. He sets the lonely in families, he leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you, God, went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook, the heavens poured down rain, before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. You gave abundant showers, O God, you refreshed your weary inheritance. Your people settled in it, and from your bounty, God, you provided for the poor. The Lord announces the word, and the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng. Kings and armies fleeing haste, the women at home divide the plunder. Even while you sleep among the sleep folds, the wings of my dove are sheathed with silver, its feathers with shining gold. When the Almighty scattered the kings in the land, it was like snow fallen on Mount Salmon. Mount Bashan, majestic mountain, Mount Bashan, rugged mountain, why gazing envy, you rugged mountain, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, where the Lord himself will dwell forever? The chariots of God are ten thousands of thousands of thousands. The Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary. When you ascended on high, you took many captives. You received gifts from the people, even from the rebellious, that you, Lord God, might dwell there. Praise be to the Lord, to the God, our Saviour, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves. From the Sovereign Lord comes escape from death. Surely God will crush the heads of his enemies, the hairy crowns of those who go on in their sins. The Lord says, I will bring them from Bashan, I will bring them from the depths of the sea, that your feet may wade in the blood of your foes, while, their tongue, while the tongues of your dogs have their share. Your procession guard has come into view, the procession of my God and King into the sanctuary. In front of the singers, after them the musicians, with them are the young women playing tambourines. Praise God in the great congregation, praise the Lord in the assembly of Israel. There is the little tribe of Benjamin leading them, there the great throng of Judah's princes, and there the princes of Zebulun and Naphtali. Summon your power, God. Show us your strength, our God, as you have done before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring you gifts. Rebuke the beast among the reeds, the herd of bulls among the calves of the nations. Humbled may the beast bring bars of silver. Scatter the nations who delight in war. Envies will envoys will come from Egypt. Cush will submit herself to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord. To him who rides across the highest heaven, the ancient heavens, who thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the heavens. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. The Lord God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. Our God is a God who saves. What a confidence we have that today as we come into his presence, whatever we face, our God is the God who saves. He saves us from our sins. He saves us and brings us into his family. He saves us out of all of our troubles. In the midst of our troubles, he walks with us and delivers us from them all. And we worship him today. Ecclesiastes in chapter 6. I have seen another evil under the sun, and it weighs heavily on mankind. The Lord gives some people wealth, possessions and honour, so that they lack nothing their hearts desire. But God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them. 
and strangers enjoy them instead. This is meaningless, a grievous evil. A man may have a hundred children and live many years, yet no matter how long he lives, if he cannot enjoy his prosperity and does not receive a proper burial, I say that a stillborn child is better off than he. It comes without meaning, it departs in darkness, and in darkness its name is shrouded. Though it never saw the sun or knew anything, it has more rest than does that man, even if he lives a thousand years, twice over, but fails to enjoy his prosperity. Do not all go to the same place. Everyone's toil is for their mouth, and yet their appetite is never satisfied. What advantage have the wise over fools? What do the poor gain by knowing how to conduct themselves before others? Better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Whatever existed, exists has already been named, and what humanity is has been known. No one can contend with a stranger who is stronger. The more words, the less meaning. And how does that profit anyone? For who knows what is good for a person in life during the few and meaningless days they pass through like a shadow? Who can tell them what will happen under the sun after they are gone? Well, the writer of Ecclesiastes gets down into a, a greater area of depression. He says, even the rich don't enjoy their riches. What a waste of time. Perhaps they're sick. Perhaps they have problems in their family. If they can't enjoy their prosperity, what's the point of wealth? And, uh, well, anyway, we live our life. We die. We have no control of what happens next. It's all meaningless. We won't jump to the end of the book. We'll wait and we'll see how the writer of Ecclesiastes, how Solomon, works out the answers to these questions. And now we turn to John chapter 18, verse 28 to 40. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfil what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest. But, by now, but now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews, gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They showed him back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Jesus here before Pilate um, answers his questions. I'm on the, I am a king, but a king from a different place. My kingdom is from another place. I'm not looking for earthly power or earthly might, but spiritual power and spiritual might. It is that kingdom that will last forever. When earth's empires built by might of military force fall, the kingdom Jesus built remains and stands strong. Let's pray today. Our Father, we pray for our homes and our families and our friends. Lord, we pray for those who live in our homes. Lord, we pray that we will be loyal and true. Our homes will be a place of love and peace. 
where everyone can reach their full potential. Lord, we pray for those whose lives are spent caring for others, whether they are caring for members of their own family, whether they work as carers, travelling and caring for people in their homes or in a care home, or those who work in hospitals. Lord, we pray that they will have a blessing from their work, a true sense of achievement and vocation. Lord, we pray for those who have lost hope. Lord, we pray for those who have lost hope and faith. Lord, we pray that you will be gracious to them and by your Spirit strengthen them. Lord, we lift up to you, your Church, today, that your name may be honoured and glorified throughout all the world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. Almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passions of sinful humanity, give your people grace so to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As I say we taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>